radial nerve anatomy pain and block let's start with anatomy so the radial nerve originate from the posterior cord as you see here and uh, of the brachial plexus eventually it's coming from c5 to t1 and it enter the posterior compartment of the arm so the posterior cord as you see here it give you the radial and the axillary and here i highlighted the radial nerve for you so you see how it entered the posterior compartment it then spirals obliquely over the posterior aspect of the humerus in the spiral groove this is the spiral groove here to emerge on the lateral side of the humerus so very important to keep this picture in mind that show you the course of the radial nerve from the original to the end so posterior compartment then you take the turn around the humerus in the spiral groove then it enter it comes from the lateral to the anterior compartment at the distal humerus level the radial nerve lies superficial to three subsequent muscle as it exit the axilla you have first from above the subscapularis then after that you have the latissimus dorsi then the teres major and you see how the nerve course in between them so the nerve lies on the latissimus dorsi tendon so that's the latissimus latissimus dorsi tendon as the nerve heads posterior to the subscapular artery toward the upper end of the spiral groove it course in the front of the long head of the biceps this is the long head of the biceps so you see the nerve uh, in front of that and behind the medial head the radial nerve pass with profunda brachii artery extremely important landmark some reference, references, they call it deep brachial artery. At the posterior aspect of the humerus, the radial nerve lie on the spiral groove, as I showed you, deep to the long head, long head of the triceps and between the lateral and medial head. So this is the long head, so the nerve between, uh, uh, underneath that, and it is between the lateral and the medial uh, uh, head of the triceps. And here you see the course with the profunda uh, artery. At the elbow level, uh, the nerve lies first in the groove between the brachialis and the brachioradialis. So here you see the brachialis. And the brachioradialis. The radial nerve then descends between the brachialis and the extensor carbi radialis longus to pass in front of the lateral malleolus, as you see here, or the lateral epicondyle. The radial nerve gives branches to brachialis from its medial aspect at this level, and of note, the brachialis receives dual innervation from the musculocutaneous and the radial nerve and you see how the nerve descend above the supinator so at the elbow at the elbow again as i said it lie uh, in the groove between the brachialis and brachial radialis so here you see this is the brachialis so if i remove the brachialis you see the nerve uh, more clear uh, notice the tendon of the brachioradialis and then lateral you have the triceps with the lateral and medial head and here you have the brachioradialis extensor carbi 
radialis longus and previous. So here, just to remind you, this is a posterior compartment from the side, from the radial aspect. And you see these three muscles lying on top of each other and, and parallel uh, to each other, the brachioradialis, extensor carpi, radialis longus, and previous under the arm. So here, uh, the nerve entered the forearm. It's in the posterior compartment of the forearm. And it starts to branches here to the superficial and deep. The deep continue as the posterior interosseous nerve. And the posterior interosseous nerve, as you see, it go inside the supinator muscle between the superficial and deep uh, part of the muscle. Um, here, uh, uh, more distal, again, you see the radial nerve, it bifurcate here to the superficial and deep. You, the deep continue as a posterior intercostal nerve that enter the supinator. And the, 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 and the superfi superficial sensory radial nerve Continue the distal forearm uh, just underneath the brachioradialis. So if you follow the brachioradialis, it's underneath that most of the time between the brachioradialis and the extensor carpi radialis. So just to remind you, because we're going to talk about the supinator muscle again, which supinate the forearm. So this is how the supination look like, and this is how the pronation look like. And notice here how the muscle gets squeezed in the supination, and we're going to talk about the nerve and entrapment there in a second. Uh, this is more a, a panoramic picture of the forearm, show you the, the radial nerve, the median nerve, the ulnar nerve, so you just you get that idea how they close to each other and how they run in the forearm. Now let's see more um, axial cut here in the forearm. But this is proximal forearm. So if you notice the deep branch uh, or the posterior interosseous branch inside the supinator now, while the superficial branch it is now underneath the uh, brachioradialis um, and close to uh, extensor carpi radialis. And here you see the posterior cutaneous nerve, or some references call it the posterior anti brachial cutaneous nerve, uh, um, which is also a branch from the radial nerve in the arm. Uh, going farther down, this is almost mid forearm. You still now see the posterior interosseous nerve. Um, it is uh, now uh, past the supinator muscle. You still see the superficial branch of the radial nerve with the radial artery running important landmark underneath the uh, brachioradialis, as you see. Uh, this is uh, uh, the med median and ulnar nerve in the anterior compartment, as you see. Here, farther down uh, in the distal forearm, you see the superficial branch even above the fascia, and you still see the uh, uh, posterior interosseous nerve running with the artery uh, between the ulna uh, and radius. So let's talk about the branches of the radial nerve. It's very important. So uh, just to start from the top, so it's a posterior cord, give you the axillary nerve, then the radial nerve here. It start branches off. The first branch is the, to the trapezius, uh, sorry, to the uh, triceps. Then you see the posterior cutaneous nerve, then lateral cutaneous nerve, posterior cutaneous nerve of the uh, forearm, then brachioradialis, then extensor carpi radialis, extensor carpi radialis longus and previous, supinator, and then you 
get the superficial and deep and the deep continue at the posterior interosseous that give you superficial and deep uh, group. Here, um, uh, uh, another reference just to show you uh, these branches again, starting from here, the posterior uh, cutaneous nerve of the arm, lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm, posterior cutaneous nerve of the, uh, of the forearm, then the posterior interosseous nerve, which is the continuation of the deep, as you see after it uh, has the, the supinator muscle. So before the supinator muscle, we call it deep, and after, once it passes, it called the posterior interosseous nerve. And we see the superficial branches here. And the superficial branch end up as the dorsal digital uh, nerve. Okay, so I think, um, I hope you have a good understanding of the radial nerve anatomy now. So let's dig deep and talk about uh, how the pain from the radial nerve uh, uh, manifests. So just a quick reminder that the radial nerve innervates all the muscles of the posterior compartment of the arm and forearm. And forearm. So it's responsible for the elbow, wrist, and finger extension and for arm pronation. The sensory, as you see here, it supply uh, this area here. Uh, so um, the lateral aspect of the upper arm inferior to the deltoid, this area here from the axillary nerve, uh, that's via the lateral cutaneous nerve of the arm, as you see here. The posterior surface of the arm and part of the posterior forearm uh, via the dorsal uh, antibrachial cutaneous nerve or the posterior cutaneous nerve, the other name, and the dorsal surface of the lateral three and half digit from the superficial sensory radial nerve, as you see in this image here. So how radial nerve uh, injury or irritation or block manifest, right? Because block is just a temporary uh, 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 thing that you need to understand what will be the patient manifestation. So let's say if, we, if the injury proximal at the axilla, then you will have weakness of the triceps muscle, right? So that will give you loose of extension of the forearm wrist, fingers, and of course, wrist drop. And you will have loose of sensation over the lateral and posterior arm, posterior forearm, and the dorsal surface of the lateral three and a half digits. If the injury at the forearm, that will uh, uh, affect um, the, uh, uh, decrease the finger and wrist extension and give you wrist drop if you injure the deep branch, right? If the injury uh, also below the elbow, more distal, then you injure the superficial, so you will have sensory manifestation, not motor. Uh, this is just a quick um, review here. So um, when you do a physical examination, so the peace sign, again, is resistant. That's ulnar nerve. The thumb sign, always the thumb. Remember, that's the radial nerve. Uh, power to people uh, against the resistance, that's median nerve, and OK sign, median nerve. And this is the dermatome of the radial nerve, uh, except this uh, tip here is coming from the median nerve, but this is all radial nerve. OK, so um, what causes radial nerve injury or neuropathy? So I divided them into arm. Uh, anticubital fossa region and forearm. So in the arm, in the axilla specifically, you can, you can get trauma, uh, pressure, uh, uh, posterior displaced uh, deltoid injection, uh, and uh, crutches. This is also a, a, a common actually, crutches. I've seen a patient in my clinic, secondary to crutches injury. Um, and in Saturday night, of course, this is a classic teaching. 
And then at the spiral groove, you have fracture surgery and lesion. At the anticubital fossa level, you have the radial tunnel syndrome, which we'll cover, um, uh, supinator syndrome, and elbow arthroscopy and arthroplasty. I'll also show you, uh, share with you a few examples. Um, at the forearm, mainly the posterior interosseous nerve, so you can get uh, entrapment, that's the supinator syndrome. You can get diabetic mononeuropathy. Uh, you can get any lesion, etc. cetera. Um, further down, uh, the sensory level um, entrapment, the sensory radial nerve entrapment, that's called the Wartenberg syndrome. And of course, you have radial uh, fracture and surgery and radial artery cannulation. I've seen a case as well. So this is an example of a post-surgical injury. You know, as a chronic pain physician, we get uh, this patient referred to you. So, um, for, so this specific patient uh, had a posterior tumor resection uh, from the elbow region, from the uh, uh, radius, uh, radial bone, and eventually had a flab from the fibula. So multiple uh, surgeries and um, end up with uh, radial nerve uh, irritation. This is another patient post-surgical. This patient had a uh, uh, total shoulder arthroplasty and she had to have a revision. Then the revision get infected. She had another revision. Uh, so eventually she ended up with um, removal of, as you see, part of the humerus and uh, muscle flap. And she presented with classic uh, radial nerve. Um, uh, neuro neuropathy. So for this specific patient, uh, I start doing um, nerve blocks for her, and that helped. It didn't last long, and end up uh, placing um, uh, radial nerve uh, stimulator uh, in around uh, this area here. So uh, this area here. Um, so. Um, Another example, we have the radial tunnel uh, syndrome, which is a compression of the posterior interosseous nerve in the radial tunnel. The radial tunnel is the submuscular path where the radial nerve travels between the lateral, lateral intermuscular septum and the supinator. So the lateral intermuscular septum formed from three muscles, um, as I showed you in, in the anatomy section, brachioradialis, extensor carbi radialis longus, and previous. The radial tunnel is about 5 cm in length from the level of the radio uh, ca capital, uh, capitular uh, joint, extending distally past the proximal edge of the supinator. These are the boundaries. The radial tunnel syndrome patient usually present with deep aching pain in the dorsal or the dorsoradial proximal forearm, which worsen at night and increase with lifting activity and forearm rotation, and often combined by muscle weakness due to pain, due to pain rather than denervation. There is no sensory manifestation because remember the superficial branch is outside. And you can have a, a localized tenderness over the radial nerve 5 centimeter distal to the lateral epicondyle. Few provocative tests. Uh, the most sensitive is the resistant to the middle uh, uh, finger extension test. And the thought, because the third digit is uh, um, um, instigate pain because the extensor carbi radialis previous insert on the third metacarbal bone. And also you can have pain with resisted supination uh, uh, test, as you see here. Um, and passive pronation with uh, wrist flexion. Um, so the radial tunnel syndrome uh, uh, commonly get mistaken with the tennis elbow or the lateral epicondyl condylitis, and uh, to differentiate that, uh, 
uh, it, for, for the radial tunnel syndrome, you have to have lack of response to conservative treatment of tennis elbow, pain worsen at the radial tunnel, as I showed you, and uh, tenderness at the radial tunnel. So here, just to show you, patient uh, with lateral epicondyl, uh, epicondylitis, usually they have the tenderness here versus here for the radial tunnel syndrome. And here, uh, you see increased pain with uh, proximal distal forearm uh, uh, hyperextension again is resistant and the more uh, specific uh, test is the resistant extension of the middle finger uh, um, again is resistant um, and this, the, the other cause that can be is the supinator syndrome, which can be confused with the radial tunnel syndrome. The supinator syndrome is also the posterior interosseous nerve, secondary to compression where the nerve enter the supinator. That's the difference here. The nerve pass between the superficial and deep head of the muscle. Um, think about it as placing your index finger in the front pocket of your jeans. Um, the anterior margin of the pocket is called the um, arcade of uh, uh, Frosset. So here, this is the arcade of uh, Frosset. And uh, you see the uh, posterior interosseous nerve can be interrupted uh, there. So the patient with supinator syndrome often have pain localized to the supinator muscle which worsen after a few uh, minutes of forest supination. By history, they have either sudden or progressive finger extension weakness. Denervation of the supinator is classically spared in supinator syndrome because most branches of the, of the muscle occur prior to the nerve passing underneath the uh, arcade. Sensation is normal in the territory of the superficial sensory Ner uh, radial nerve, which makes sense. And uh, this slide help you to differentiate between these three uh, common uh, um, differential diagnoses. Then we have the Wartenberg syndrome, uh, also called as uh, Chiralgia parasitica, which is entrapment of the superficial branch of the radial nerve, mostly between the brachioradialis and extensor carbi radialis longus. So as you see here, with repetitive uh, pronation, with repetitive pronation, the brachialis tendon normally closes the space between the two tendons in a scissor-like fashion. So potentially irritate the nerve where it emerges from the fascia. Risk factor, tight hand uh, cuffs, uh, uh, wrist watch uh, bands, uh, cast, prolonged typing, uh, 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 time typing on a keyboard. I see this a lot also in people who spend a lot, um, many hours working in their computer or laptop. So um, the pain and numbness of the radial aspect of the dorsum of the hand to the base of the thumb, there is no weakness here. Then you can get a tenal sign over the radial nerve at the distal forearm and you can get the wristwatch sign where if you ask the patient to do flexion and pronation of the wrist and ulnar deviation, that often cause paresthesia in the distribution of the sensory branch of the radial nerve. Think about it, you are pulling the nerve. Okay, um, now let's talk about radial nerve block and peripheral nerve simulator and uh, uh, nerve uh, treatment, intervention and nerve treatment. So starting from the axilla, that's the axillary artery, right? You have the radial nerve uh, here and ulnar, median, musculocutaneous. So the radial nerve usually deep to the uh, uh, axillary artery and, uh, uh, and posterior, so posterior and deep. Uh, although um, it's most of the cases, as you see, 
they follow this and usually the radial nerve at five o'clock from the axillary artery. But you have to remember you have some uh, uh, anomalies or, or abnormalities, let's put it that way. So in about 10%, you might have the radial nerve in, in, in slightly different location or uh, fused with the ulnar nerve. So here um, at this level, we just passed. So we are at this level. You see the green is the radial nerve. You see the deep brachial artery or profunda. That's the, the, the red one. And at this level, um, you see the radial nerve between uh, 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 deep and uh, bit, uh, with, the, with, the, with the deep artery or the profunda artery deep to the long head of the triceps. So this is the long head of the triceps and between, uh, so underneath the long head of the triceps and between the medial and lateral head of the triceps. This is the humerus. So again, if you remember this, so it's deep to the lateral head and this is the lateral head and between the lateral head and the medial uh, head. Going slightly down now at uh, C. So here, uh, the radial nerve can be located at the level of the intermuscular septum. So here's the intermuscular septum. Uh, again, with the deep brachial artery, profunda, near the cortical bone of the humerus. So here, you have the brachialis brachialis, which is this muscle here, and you have the lateral head of the uh, triceps and the nerve literally in the groove at this point. If you go slightly down uh, here at this level, D, now the nerve still between the uh, brachialis and the lateral head of the uh, triceps, but slightly uh, uh, take off from the uh, uh, bone. So here, um, another uh, picture from another reference, very nicely see, you see this is lateral, you have the brachialis, and medial, you see the, the, the lateral head, the lateral head of the, the triceps, and you see the radial nerve with the profunda together in the groove. Going slightly down, you see the nerve taking off slightly above the, um, the, the, the groove or the humerus. And again, this is lateral brachialis. This is uh, triceps. So I'll try, uh, I flip them. Uh, and okay, actually, I found it... Uh, here is a reasonable uh, place to place a peripheral nerve stimulator uh, in this uh, space between the nerve and the uh, bone. Uh, again, it depends on the indication. So at this level here, uh, the nerve still between the brachialis and the lateral head of the triceps, but at this specific view, you can also see the posterior anti uh, uh, a cutaneous uh, nerve of the uh, radial nerve. So now here, uh, another uh, picture, you see um, the nerve with the profunda in the spiral groove. Another picture, as I said, when it take off uh, at this level and here, so we are uh, lower as you see it. So this is the distal uh, arm. Now you start to see the brachioradialis and the uh, brachialis between them. And you can appreciate there is two physicals here that eventually it will bifurcate to the superficial and deep branches. Uh, this is more even uh, more obvious here. So two uh, physicals between, uh, this is now at the, uh, between the brachialis and the brachioradialis. And just at the level of the lateral epicondyle. Um, 
another uh, picture here as you see now we start to go down this the radius bone now they start to bifurcate so you have the superficial and the deep branches and here again they uh, you see the, the 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 deep branch here the superficial here and now this is the uh, brachial radialis. This is the extensor carbi radialis longus. And if you if you think about this, this is the, um, actually here the supinator. So this at this level, at this level, the motor branch just start to enter the supinator uh, muscle. Here. At this level, it is inside. It's very clear. It's between the superficial and deep uh, head of the supine of the supinator muscle. So now it's inside, and this is where we get the supinator uh, syndrome. So, and you see above it, you have the extensor carbi radialis longus. So here, uh, I just uh, uh, went slightly up to chase the superficial branch the superficial uh, branch it is between the uh, brachioradialis and extensor carbi radialis longus at this level now uh, this is again the superficial branch notice the orientation uh, slightly start to chase it down so it's from now on you will see it underneath the brachioradialis always under the brachioradialis, and more lateral, you have the extensor carbi radialis longus. So here, uh, again, we just slightly went up to show you the, uh, the two branches, the superficial and deep. This is the supinator. This is the brachioradialis. So at this level, at this level here, is the radial tunnel. So this is where you get the radial tunnel uh, uh, syndrome. Um, this is uh, another reference. So let's start from B, which you notice B um, above the humerus. And I have the brachialis here and the biceps tendon here. And the, the, the brachialis uh, uh, as I showed you, the, and you see the extensor carbi radialis longus, and here you see the nerve. So going, start to go down. So now it didn't bifurcate. Now it start to bifurcate. So you see this is the superficial, this is the deep, and this is the recurrent uh, or radial recurrent artery, as you see it here, radial recurrent artery. And you get lateral, uh, uh, by the way, this is the biceps tendon again, and you have the brachioradialis here, you have the extensor carbi radialis longus here, and this is the deep, this is the deep uh, um, supinator. So now we are at D. So now we entered, we entered the supinator. So we have this is the superficial, and this is the deep. So again, we are inside the supinator where we have the supinator syndrome. And here, even farther down, but it's still inside the supinator. This is all supinator. And you can appreciate even the, the posterior interests start to bifurcate at uh, this level. So this uh, image here is a long axis view of the deep branch of the inter or, or the interests. So the, this here natural position forearm and you see this is the nerve enter. So this is the superficial, this is the deep head of the supinator. And this is the arcade here. So then you ask the patient to supinate. So look what happened to the nerve. Look what happened to the nerve. 
this is in a normal patient. So imagine uh, if we have entrapment, how it will look like. Now, going farther down, this is close to the wrist. Now you see the superficial branch close to the radial artery underneath the uh, brachialis, brachialis tendon at this uh, point. So superficial branch, uh, as you see it. So now let me show you more images here. So here at this level, middle third of the forearm, around here, middle third of the forearm, you see the superficial branch deep to the brachialis, sorry, brachioradialis, this brachioradialis tendon, as you imagine, because now the end of the muscle. So underneath the brachioradialis muscle or tendon, you see the superficial branch with the radial artery close to each other. And of course, you see the other muscles. If we go to C here, what you notice that, notice that the, the nerve now is above the fascia. So the nerve is above the fascia and it's subcutaneous now. Subcutaneous and uh, you see the brachioradialis here, tendon, and the cephalic uh, uh, vein, so the cephalic vein. And here, it's also a potential um, site for injury when you do uh, cannulation. G going even farther down, so that's, we were here, now we are at uh, D. Now, you clearly see the cephalic vein, and you clearly see this very small superficial branch above the fascia, above the fascia, and you see the extensor carbioradialis head, and again, this is a common site of injury with cannulation. So I hope, um, we, you get a grasp of the radial nerve. We cover, I covered the anatomy very